before I begin talking about the uh, state of the knockouts, let me put out this disclaimer to say that I am not bashing the knockouts or Impact Wrestling or TNA or any of its affiliates, that, hence, therefore, for whatever. I say that because, you know, TNA has soft feelings and sometimes people on there decide that you're bashing us, the internet's getting on, they don't know what they're talking about, they blah, 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 so... I am strictly stating this to be my opinion of the TNA Knockouts division, some of which you may or may not agree with. Now, that being said, the Knockouts division. At one point in time, right up until 2009, going into 2010, was easily my favorite part of any TNA broadcast, without question. Without doubt, and I think that it was backed up, at least by the Nielsen ratings, in the fact that they drew viewers. Maybe they weren't breaking in at 2 million, 3 million views, but they were, they were the highest rated segment on that show, which begs the question, why were they treated so bad? Why on earth, reportedly, I mean, let me cover my butt here, but reportedly, why were they treated so bad? I spoke with April Hunter. She pulled back the curtain, and I did point the uh, finger to that interview. If you want to hear it, it's there. It's on Blog Talk Radio, and I think I, there's portions of it here on YouTube. If not, I'll put it up later. But she pointed it out, pointed it out to me. They, they paid pretty low, and for all the, the, the issues with, with financial troubles throughout the years that they've had, you know, most of them, and I say most, stuck around. Most of the knockouts hung in there. They they were trying to make something uh, out of that company, or at least out of the division. I don't know if they were made, trying to make something out of the company, but at least out of the division. And it seemed for a while there that they were accomplishing that goal. You go back and you look at some of those matchups, they put on phenomenal shows. You had people in there like Taylor Wilde, Awesome Kong, Gail Kim. You had the beautiful people uh, consisting of Velvet Sky and Angelina Love. Madison Rain got tossed in there. S S uh, Sarita came in later. I'm probably forgetting a bunch of them. Uh, Joseph, Jojo Bolt. I know her <coughs> Her name is different on the indie circuit, but um, aside from all that, I mean, the, the, the division was growing. It was growing and people, that, or at least fans of it, thought that it was worth something. And it seemed that all the cards was pointing towards them getting a big push, especially considering that they gave away a free show, generally speaking, pay-per-view quality, on TV, on New Year's Eve. Maybe it wasn't the best night for it. You know, people were out and whatnot, but still, they gave it to them. They gave them four hours of broadcast time to show a tournament to feature the new number one contender to the then champion, Tara. And as soon as the new year rolled over, and new management or new creative heads or a new creative direction came into play, somehow or another, that seemed to just die. It just went down the tubes, not right away, but bit by bit, they kind of began to fade off. Awesome Kong, who was defined as the lead dominating force in that company was used less and less Hamada who had come in there not that long ago wasn't featured anymore Alyssa Flash was gone Tracy Brooks, ODB you could probably go down the line let's not even start with what they did to Roxy Laveau it, it was really depressing I mean it started to turn into a, almost a carbon copy of what you had up in the Divas division which I did not understand at all considering that the knockouts were for a little while, the standard bearer. They showed that you could have a reasonable division built around the wrestlers. They weren't doing it the other way around. They weren't models coming in and then learning how to wrestle. They were wrestlers and they just happened to look good. Now we fast forward up to 2013. And we talk about today's state of the knockouts division. Which is probably... The lowest point that the knockouts have had since they've actually called themselves the knockouts division. We've had people drop like flies out of this thing. 
I mean, the height of it, I go back to saying 2009 because in, in my eyes, that was probably the height as far as amount of people involved, the amount of talent that was there. I mean, it was a good time. But now you are down to whew, literally nothing. I illustrate the point by showing what the original Knockouts banner looks like. And for those of you that remember, you know, the Knockouts banner, they, they decided let's make a, a website strictly dedicated to the Knockouts. It's a little bit late, but they decided to do that. And on that front page, they had everybody that was in their division at the time. You had nine people. An entire roster or, or division centered around nine people. Not that bad. But let's look at the other side of that picture. What the Knockouts roster looks like now. Big difference. Now, I want to make you know make sure that nobody decides to get on me about the numbers that's going on in Knockouts Division. Yeah, okay, technically the numbers aren't that big of a drop. You had nine people on the first shot of the original banner. You got six people now, but let's look at that in, in depth. The six people that you have are Christy Hemme. Taryn Terrell, Brooke Tessmacher, Gail Kim, the champion ODB, and Velvet Sky. On paper, five of them would seem like a, a pretty good roster to have. Let's all take into account Christy Hemi does not wrestle. So her benefit to the knockout division is zero. She, she's as at least as far as in ring work, she doesn't offer anything to that division anymore. She hasn't wrestled in a while, does not appear to ever decide to want to get back in the ring, so you have to scratch her off the list. Taryn Terrell, who was showing herself out to be a pretty decent talent, I was really impressed by her. And if you have not seen that Slammiversary match between her and Gail Kim, do yourself a favor, go find it. Problem now is that Taryn is pregnant. Somebody had to do it. I mean, she's a good-looking girl. But anyway, she's pregnant. And her to get into the ring right now probably would not be good for her health or the baby. So that's understandable. Same reason that Madison Rain is not there. And we'll get into the, the firing of the, and releases of all these other people in a minute. Brooke Tessmacher is now involved in a storyline with Bully Ray, which pretty much keeps her away from the ring. She hasn't been in the ring. She hasn't been in the ring for weeks. It's been a long, long time. And right along with her in that same category of being now touted as a valet opposed to a wrestler is Velvet Sky. She is now the sidearm piece to Chris Sabin, her real-life boyfriend. And so what does that leave us? It leaves us the sum of two people. Two ODB and Gail Kim are the last two knockouts standing. Now, I understand that there's no rule in that company that says that Tess Mocker and, and Velvet Sky can't hop back in the ring at any given time and, and start to compete for the championship. But, I mean, let's, let's look at this here. Even if they do, that's four people. What kind of division is that? Four four knockouts they came from a state where the knockouts were were huge and I know like I said I'm forgetting people Angelina Love opted not to come back Madison Rain got pregnant Sarita released Tara released Winter released all these people that have come and gone into the knockouts division and not utilized or you know, just put out the pasture, whatever the case may be. And let's not even get into you know the the other faces. SoCal Val was not a wrestler either, but she was released. She had been in the company for a long time, so she got dropped. Mickey James, you notice that she also no longer on the banner. Former champion. 
and it is reported that she has opted not to resign to that company. Cannot say that I blame her, and morale certainly has to be down. If I was in that company, my morale would be incredibly low. Now, I am not going to sit here and tell you that I'm going to stop watching TNA or Impact Wrestling or that I'm going to say that they're done or that I hope that they fail or whatever the case may be. I mean, that, far from it. I really don't. I, I do not hope that they fail. I want them to succeed. I said then and I say now, I believe that Impact Wrestling, not just the women's division, but Impact Wrestling as a whole is important to the wrestling structure. Whether they be good or not, it's always good to have some alternative or some form of competition to the mainstream. Now, they'll never be competition to WWE. WWE is just light years ahead of them, so we'll just stick with calling them the alternative. It's good to have an alternative. When I get tired of seeing those two-minute matches that take place with inside of a WWE ring, I like being able to look at the knockouts and seeing them go for a 15-minute match. You know, I enjoy that. But what I don't enjoy is knowing that ODB and Gail Kim basically have to hold this entire division together until A, they hire some more people, or B, some more people come back. Either way, they got to get people into that division. Otherwise, it's sunk. But then again, how many other people have they fired over the last couple of weeks? Last point here. The knockouts division was then a crown jewel in the show of Impact Wrestling. And I hope that it gets its former glory back. But I wouldn't hold my breath to see people that have been there come back to the division anymore. Too many of them have been burned and just flat out refused to deal with Impact Wrestling and its politics. And Taylor Wow, who I thought was probably one of the best things to come across the women's division in any federation, just up and quit the business. And I think that's in large part because of Impact Wrestling. Impact Wrestling, you should be ashamed of yourselves for driving people out like that. <sighs> if you have any comments about this uh, state of the knockouts, I mean, I love to hear it. I love to read it. Tell me what you think of it. Tell me if you think that they have any hope that they'll rebound, that they may come back. Uh, any questions about it, feel free to drop them in there. Whatever you got, I'll be happy to see them all. Uh, but be respectful for everybody else that's coming to listen or read your stuff. Thanks a lot, guys, and I will see you later.